lunchtime showdown for Harlequins and Leeds, and the Rhinos are desperate for a win to keep pace with St Helens at the top of the table. Last time here, they won 60 points to nil. Revenge is on the agenda then for the Quins. The weekend so far shaped up like this. A massive victory for Hulkingston Rovers at Salford and a great win for St Helens against Hull. Both of those games were played on Friday night. It means the Saints are fall clear of Leeds at the top, so Leeds must win to have any realistic hope of overhauling the champions at the top of the Super League table. The significant move, though, came at the other end. Hulkingston Rovers win at Salford, puts the City Reds deep in trouble. Three points adrift with just five remaining. They need two wins from their remaining matches to have any hope of survival. Now, later on today, Bradford play host to Wakefield, Huddersfield entertain Catalan Dragons, and there's a full house on the way to Warrington for the visit of Wigan. They all kick off at 3 o'clock. Look at the weather here. It's absolutely glorious in London, and Harlequins line up like this. Mark McClendon is the skipper and fullback. then it's Wells, Sykes, Tyrone Smith and Sharif, Scott Hill and Danny Orr, the halfback combination. Up front, Tamata, Randall and Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook, Gaffer and Hopkins in the second row. Hopkins will leave the club, he will retire at the end of this year, and Henry Paul returns to the starting lineup. And on the bench, Rob Purdom, the club captain, he's back, that's a huge boost. Rinaldi, Gratian and Mabu. The coach is Brian McDermott. These are the Rhinos. Brent Webber, fullback. Donald, Tupi, senior and the young Ryan Hall continuing on the wing. Danny Maguire and Rob Burrow. Forwards here. Luluai gets a start. Sinfield's the skipper at hooker. Bailey. Jamie Jones, Buchanan. Jamie Peacock, second row. Gareth Ellis is the loose forward. On the bench, Ali Lauatiti, Jamie Thackeray, Ian Kirk, Jordan Tanzi, coach, till the end of this year anyway, Tony Smith. Well, marvellous shirt sleeved crowd here at the Twickenham Stoop. The temperature in the 80s, and with the finishing line in sight, both Quinns and Leeds aim to avoid a third defeat in a row. The timing of this kickoff allows Harlequins the chance of the top six. They've never beaten Leeds as the Harlequins. They'll probably never have a better chance than this. Just four defeats from 15 here in the past 12 months under Brian McDermott. They won five home games in a row at the end of 2006. Rhinos supporters have travelled knowing their team is equally desperate for the win to continue their quest for the league leaders trophy. But they've hit their worst form of the year just as they did at this point of 2006. Their only win in the past month was an impressive one, however, 22-10 over St Helens at Knowsley Road. Mad Dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun, so too do Super League stars. The conditions today mean that we will have a two-minute water break midway through each half, so as the players can rehydrate. And, Steve, oh, there will be one or two of these players, I think, shedding a few pounds today. Certainly in the forwards, that is for sure, Eddie, but you look at the Harlequins lineup, and they really know they've got to get their defensive pattern sorted out early in the match. Leeds, of course, led by Kevin Sinfield, again playing as hooker. It won't be easy for them, I must say. Vociferous crowd, of course of Harlequin supporters and uh, one of the matchday mascots is Jack Hughes, son of the director of the Harlequins club, Mr David Hughes. There he goes, looks like he's got a good turn of pace as well. Let's hope his team have Phil Clark, boiling hot day, water will be a key. I know you're not a fan of that, but it will be today. I'll tell you what was interesting, Eddie, is that the Harlequins warmed up on the pitch for 10 minutes longer than the Leeds Rhinos. Leeds cut their usual pre-match warm-up short here today. Let's see whether that makes any difference over the course of the 80 minutes of the match. I think the big difference as well is be on this Leeds three-quarter outfit. You must say that they have the advantage in speed against the Harlequins today, but we'll have to wait and see. I remember we were here last year on a baking hot day as well when Warrington were in town and uh, Harlequins won on that occasion. It was a controversial uh, afternoon though with uh, tries being awarded and not being awarded without reference up to the video referee. Today Ashley Klein is the video referee waiting to adjudicate on any decisions 
that might come his way. That's Henry Paul back in the side for Harlequins. He missed Huddersfield and brother Robbie a couple of weeks ago. This now is Tyrone Smith and Gareth uh, Ellis is the first man to him. It'll be interesting to see whether the Harlequins coach Brian McDermott also back is Rob Purdom. He really is a great advantage to the side, but that's good movement out wide. Should have gone. Had the chance to offload to the winger. Yes, Ricky Sharif was hunting down the touchline. There is Brian McDermott, the Harlequins coach. Been here for 12 full months now. He faces Tony Smith, though, for only the second time. Uh, Brian McDermott is a former Leeds assistant, and he is watching here as Brent Webb makes the break. But that's a great defensive tackle. And there is Tony Smith, the Leeds coach, watching on anxiously as well as Luluai drives it forward once more. Just shows you there the speed that they have in the three-quarter line leads. The fullback Brent Webb, superb, 30 metres downfield. Ryan Bailey, the prop forward, will trundle the ball further forward for the Leeds Rhinos. And here now is Jamie Jones Buchanan. Good defensive uh, stint, though, now that they've got Brent Webb to ground uh, four tackles ago from the Harlequins. This is Burrow, here is Maguire, has tormented the Harlequins so many times in the past as Danny Maguire. Four tries here uh, last season, and he's got 21 in meetings against London or Harlequins uh, during his career. But that wasn't the uh, best kick downfield. We have uh, Sean McRae alongside us here at uh, the Twickenham Stoop, fully recovered, I trust, Sean, from the disappointment of Friday night. Yes, well, some will get over ready, and uh, I'd like to move on to other games now, and we'll get ready. In fact, we play Leeds next Friday night, so uh, I get a first-hand view. You know, we've been speaking for the last few weeks about the conditions that players play in, and talking about the wet and how it's a leveller for, for certain clubs. Today's climate, though, is not a lever at all. It really gets down to attrition rate, because if you don't have an even share of possession, you lose your speed of line very quick. You don't want to get off, off the ground and make another tackle. So both sides are going to be very conscious about controlling the football. I do suspect, though, we'll see the ball flow from side to side at certain times in the game. I think we'll have a very open game. Let's hope so, indeed. Leeds hunting the man in possession and hunting him illegally. The ball was stripped from him. It's a penalty to the Harlequins. Kevin Sinfield, the, the culprit. Can go for the ball, he claims it's the official, but went for the ball-carrying arm, and that's the reason why he looked a bit confused at the official. But as I say, this is not a day for the forwards. Well, this is a great opportunity for Harlequins. He is uh, Louis McCarthy, Scarsbrook, one of the most exciting prospects ever seen in this part of the world. And that's a good ball from Randall, and they fire it wide again. This is Danny Orr. Castleford lad Danny Orr and being forced towards the touchline but managing to get to ground. He would love to beat the Leeds Rhinos as everybody from Castleford does. This is a ball inside now to the number 18 Matt Gaffer for Harlequins. He is tackled though. Just 10 metres away. Good quick play the ball that. Randall. Man hits the ball at pace. It's uh, Paul Sykes. He claims from the terraces of a high go, shot and go, the start. player looks at the referee, but it wasn't. And so a kick into the in-goal area. Something here for everyone to sort out. And there was a push on the Leeds defender inside the in-goal area. And so it's a penalty to Leeds on the 10-metre line. Tyrone Smith, little doubt that he had uh, an involvement there with Ryan Hall, the winger. There it is, just a bit of an elbow, nudge, it was sufficient. And Phil Bentham in the perfect spot to judge all about that. Here comes uh, Kylie Lulawai again. His cousin Philip made his debut for Salford on Friday night and Sean McRae. And, um, of course, Thomas Lulawai will be involved in action, we presume, later on for Wigan at Warrington. That's a mistake, though, by Jamie Peacock. And here's a hole for Tyron Smith to try and exploit. Clinton Tupi gets to him, though. Well, he made the break, and Smith, this is the incident, was it Reeve? Peacock thinks it is, but Smith made the break, and for some unknown reason, instead of running straight into the gap, and that's another mistake. Said he went backwards. No. Well, must have got a shout from the, uh, the touch judge. And there's a bit of argy-bargy in the uh, background here while this uh, incident is sorted out by... Phil Bentham, Randall and Bailey uh, eyeballing each other. Hopkins might have been involved as well. There was a melee of uh, players all around the place. 
Well, they're definitely trying to get the ball away, and that was forward. Oh, okay. Where the penalty is coming from? Really should have been just a scrum down. I feel like the lead should have been. He was offside. He's thinking he went forward, and the ball. Actually, as you saw, the ball. Few players came in. Okay, no problem. Thanks. He's penalised him, Phil. I think for moving off the mark, not playing the ball. So to be fair okay, to him, he did not shout yeah, help the official. It's understanding, lads. OK, we're leaving it from there. Oh, leaving it, it there. OK. A little bit of a push and shove with, uh, with Bailey. Randall came in a little bit later. He's already tackled. And Warm he's enough out there, fellas, without having to... Uh, get the blood toilet. Uh, he was already tackled, Henry Paul, and he moved off the mark. On halfway, Leeds Rhinos restart. Here's Clinton Tupi again. Oh, the ball comes out to Rob Burrow. He does well to hang on to that. Did the right thing as well, a little halfback. Instead of trying to pick it up, but just make sure the body went over the top of the, the football. This is getting very spicy indeed. It's a tactic that's come into this game quite often now over the past few weeks. In as much that players don't put a man with a football down, they hold him up so that a third man can come in. A crash tackle, normally into the ribs, can be painful. Brent Webb, another little half break, he's so dangerous, Sir Brent Webb. Rhino's top try scorer in the Super League, the fullback with 16. Here is Ryan Bailey again. Plays the ball to Kevin Sinfield, finds Rob Burrow. Burrow will slide the ball down the line. And there's work here for McClendon to do, he does it and plays the ball quickly. Ricky Sharif now, got a good turn of pace as Sharif. He has arrived uh, back here from Doncaster, Ricky Sharif, and he's making his mark in this his second spell. Good run from Tyrone Smith again, a stumbling run for all of that. Not surprisingly, we've seen all the breaks come, or half breaks, from the three-quarter line. Nice offload. Great offload from Scott Hill. This is Chuck Randall, and Randall has got Tupi after him, and Tupi collars him. The end of tackle number four, midway inside the Leeds half of the field. Lee Hopkins finds Scott Hill, Scott Hill bullets the pass to Orr. Orr goes wider and finds McClendon, McClendon has got Danny Orr in support. Oh, a bit of a mix-up. It's a penalty though, it's a penalty to Harlequins. He had Matt Gaffer coming back on the inside and as he tried to offload him, superb work wasn't it? Danny Orr got flattened. Back on the inside, it was a high shot from Webb. He would have felt this or Oh, I've seen him, got his hand. Oh, I tell you what, that might be put on report. Should have been. That was no little tap. Well, the referee has called Kevin Sinfield to him. Wonder if he is going to put it on report. OK, we're not quite sure the initial point of contact. It's going on report. OK. Yes, it goes on report. They deserved it. Well, they are not interested in the two points on offer from the penalty, Harlequins, they're after four. And here is Randall, attacking the centre of the Leeds defence. Will run as another well, one. and another high challenge. Well, surely they've got to do something about Webb it. Webb again. He's got to go. I'm sorry, after his job. You know, okay. this guy with right. ball in hand, Brent Webb, is, is, is nothing short of fantastic, but he just lets two, himself right, down. Needs to have a word with him. That's He's already been put on report. He deserves to go. And Randall is, uh, as you can see, in the spot of bother, right underneath the sticks. Kevin, and he goes to uh, well. Randall and just checks that he's all right. And that's another yeah, incident on report. So Brent Webb will be looked at by the officials at disciplinary yeah, twice, twice yeah. in the last minute. I still feel, though, Steve, that they could have still put it on report and sent him to the Simbin for at least ten minutes. You're right. I know that there was many, many, many years ago there was an argument about a legal argument in regards to you can only send a man off if he's done something really bad. And that's in between, and I'm with you, he should get at least ten minutes because there's no disadvantage to Leeds and no advantage to the Harlequin. There's an advantage here to Harlequins though, they're a metre short of the line, they're running another one here, and that is Henry Paul Second. trying to dive for the line. He's held up though by the Leeds defence. And now they'll spread it wide with Danny Orr. A great pass and almost over. They're moving this ball about quickly. This is Scott Hill. Scott Pretty Hill good defence there. 
had to be good as well because you can see Scott Hill drifting back on the inside, trying to look some, for someone coming on the angle. Danny Orr once again flicks the pass back to Mark McClendon. McClendon to Henry Paul, and Henry Paul is clobbered by Jamie Jones Buchanan on the last tackle this set of six. It's a great spell, this, for Harlequins. Here is Scott Hill. Good ball. McClendon wide, and they're in. They must be in with Sykes. And Paul Sykes gives Harlequins the lead for coach Brian McDermott on this glorious afternoon. Highly rated, this fellow, by Tony Smith, the Leeds coach, so much so that wearing his Great Britain cap in June, Tony Smith gave Paul Sykes his first international appearance. He got a try on his international debut too, and he got a try against Leeds at Headingley in March. They fully deserved it as well, especially after the two penalties given away, and, would you believe, the two high shots, first one from Brent Webb, then he followed it up with another, two bad ones, gets put in report twice by Phil Venton, the, uh, the official, and this is just desserts. Beautiful running off the ball. You can see as soon as Scott Hill got the ball, you should look for the dummy runner coming through. That left him no option but to come off the wing and allowed Sykes a stroll in to the corner. Completely confused the Rhinos' defence. Superb effort. Well, it's been a great start to the game for Harlequins here, and they lead by four points to nil. The try scorer indeed was uh, Paul Sykes, and there he is, who is taking this uh, attempted kick at goal. It wasn't John Wells, as we uh, incorrectly told you. Apologies for that. We'll see John Wells later, maybe, on the graphic, if he is successful with a try himself. Paul Sykes misses with the conversion, but it's his four points that Harlequins lead by. I think they lead because simply his side have been more aggressive when in defence and obviously more determined when they've had the ball. They've really carried the ball stronger than their opponents. They've shifted it cleverly at times and they're finding spaces and at the moment leads are clearly second best. And Phil, I think that's indicative, isn't it, of the conditions. If you've got an ability to get a couple of repeat sets on another team, your defence, I don't care how good a defensive side you are, you're going to struggle to hang on. It was a brilliantly worked play, though. Let's not underestimate the... The, the, the brilliance of Scott Hill in that play because it was last tackle and he decided to run it. He took the odds, they had plenty of numbers. Uh, as I said, I think we're going to see plenty of lateral movement today with the football. And there's another questionable challenge, this time by Ryan Bailey. Well, Leeds have got to get their tackling uh, sorted out. Penalty here to Harlequins again. Well, Leeds are a little indisciplined at the moment, 11 and a half minutes of the match gone. It's amazing now, when you have a little bit of a, a push and barge, there was hardly any uh, punches thrown in that little fracas about uh, five or six minutes ago, but it's amazing how it can upset a side and give the opportunity to the others to take control. And that is what the Queens have done so far. Here is Chad Randall. Randall finds Scott Hill. Scott Hill, good ball to Danny Orr. Oh, just could not be taken in. Leeds have it back. It was McClendon who lost the ball in the tackle. Bit of hesitation there by the skipper, Kevin Sinfield. He thought perhaps that it may have ricocheted off one of his players. And he was in an offside position. And he just took the gamble at the very last moment to flick it up from the ground backwards. They need to settle down a bit now, the Rhinos. They're a little bit just uh, off the boil. And... But a temper's running, but what a great break from Peacock. Wonderful break, finds Danny Maguire. Maguire comes back on the inside on one knee, gets it away to Senior. Senior gives it wide to Scott Donald. But the Carlequins move back and cover the threat down that left-hand channel. And there's a Leeds player now down. I think that might be Maguire. This is Burrow. Rob Burrow! Still going, Burrow. He had Brent Webb there, couldn't get the pass away. They're underneath the sticks, though. Maguire still is down on his haunches in back play. Swinging arm from Scott Hill there, got away with it. Sinfield. Burrows is down as well, two half-backs. This is Lulawai, and Lulawai loses the ball. And it was stolen, says referee Phil Bentham. He was right there on the spot. Maguire and Burrow still out of the picture here for Leeds. Did Hopkins or McClendon, either of them got it away anyway. There's Burrow receiving treatment just a few moments before that. His half-back partner, Danny Maguire, 
he caught one. It's always difficult for this fellow, Rob Berry. So small, isn't he? Underneath, missed a swinging arm. Then you'll see another one come from Scott Hill. He went for his head, got him on that occasion, didn't miss. Getting tasty. Referee stopped the clock while Rob Burrow receives treatment because he's uh, right in front of the uh, sticks here. And in fairness to Scott Hill, uh, Rob Burrow was on all fours then, wasn't he? Oh, he's entitled to make the tackle, Eddie. I, I think, it, to me, it looks like he's winded. He's just been caught awkwardly in the tackle. Scott Hill's used a very good technique there to, to roll him over and put him on his back. And uh, as unfortunately, this is one of the byproducts of our game. Players sometimes uh, land awkwardly or, or get caught in a, in a difficult position. He looks like he's been winded, or perhaps a rib cartilage. It's hard to say. Um, that would be my diagnosis, uh, Dr. McRae, for the day. Uh, what do you think, Phil? Well, there's obviously a problem for uh, Rob Burrow. And he leaves the field. Yep. Though he looks to be uh, holding his his ribs at some stage, really. Yeah, I think he uh, I think he just ricocheted down. Maybe the the ball carrying arm just got into his rib cage. Looks like a, probably a cartilage rip. So leads underneath the sticks. That's Kylie Luluai. As a result of this penalty. Lulawai will play the ball to Sinfield. He'll fire it into the arms of Jordan Tanzi. It'll be very important today how the two coaches alternate their interchanges off the bench. Here is Kevin Sinfield. Well, he had plenty of dummy, dummy runners, but there was no second phase there. Tanzi and Maguire and Brent Webb skips out of one challenge, but then goes behind Keith Senior. And that is a penalty to Harlequins for obstruction. Well, that's the one occasion where if you do use the dummy runner, you've got to make sure that when the dummy runner comes through, which you can see there, it was Jamie Jones Buchanan out wide. And as soon as he made contact, there was screams to the official. There is a culprit. Not the type of beard you need on a day like this, I wouldn't imagine. Fourteen minutes gone, Harlequins ahead, 4-0. We've had eight penalties in the opening 14 minutes of this match. It's been in discipline. And Leeds have got the ball back because... Grayson a, dro dropped it. Yes, there was a knock-on by John Grayson. There was a problem. The slippy conditions out there, and that was clearly reefed away. Two on one. That was so clear from the camera. And Grayson appeals to the opinion. Well, it's getting very messy. Is this not a strip? Of course it is. And it's one-on-one. On one. Is it what well, it is? You're right, Eddie. And wait, wait, they were very late to come through. And Lulawai was uh, a few seconds after. Tupi up the middle, halted by Hopkins and uh, Henry Paul. Brent Webb is the dummy half. Here goes Gareth Ellis up the middle. Legs pumping, but uh, Harlequins hang on to him. He'll play the ball there to Brent Webb. Here is Jamie Peacock. And Peacock offloads. Balls flicked around up in the air. Here comes Ryan Hall. Scrambling defence there by the Harlequins. It had to be as well. And a penalty to Leeds now. He's got to do something, the official now. Nine this is, penalties. Five, oh, this four. is so scrappy. They've gone for the quick tap. Yet again. They have with Sinfield. Brent Webb. They come back this way with Maguire. Maguire flicks it to Ellis. And Ellis is halted. Terrific challenge. Lee Hopkins with that. Will retire at the end of the year and go home, he says. They'll miss him. Jamie Jones Buchanan flick the pass. And it's Hopkins again who comes to the rescue of Harlequins. Just tried to force it there, didn't he? Jones Buchanan, far too fancy. Hopkins straight into the breadbasket. Thank you very much indeed. Neat little flick, wasn't it? Wrong player. Full credit though to Quinns, they got back in numbers, they were really on the rack there. Here is Henry Paul again. He's got the experience of Henry Paul, he realises, just settle things down a little bit, make sure we get a good kick and chase. Danny Hall with the kick over the top, it will bounce uh, safely into the arms of Ryan Hall. I think, Eddie, there's a lesson learned from the from the Harlequins team and that before they had an opportunity to get out of their own half and there was a turnover straight away with a one-on-one -on -one steal and 
they were just they were just able to settle that ball down. And it's, a, it's again, it's a lesson to everyone involved in rugby league that sometimes it's not that important what you do with every set of six. It's the fact that you do complete some sets of six. And they were just able to take a little bit of energy out of Leeds who were, who were putting a lot of pressure on the Harlequins line and they were able to, um, to withstand that, something that, that Leeds weren't able to do earlier in the half. Penalty here to Leeds for uh, Harlequins not standing square at the play of the ball. I get the impression the Leeds coach Tony Smith will get the message out now and say, look, let's play a, a little bit of a down-to-earth basic football, let's use the big forwards down into the middle. We saw the first try from Sykes, that was worked very well by just doing exactly the same thing, and then when they got the sprint out wide, they had the advantage, overlap, that's what Leeds have to do. Here's Jamie Thackeray just on, oh, great try from Thackeray! Just hit the ball at pace and kept on going, and Harlequins couldn't stop him. And Jamie Thackeray gets the try and leads our level. He's made only one start this year, has Jamie Thackeray. That was against the Bulls in Cardiff in May. He's been a substitute in the last couple. He missed the win at St Helens in May with a rib injury. And that's his third try of the campaign. Thackeray puts Leeds back in the hunt. All came about by a very, very quick play of the ball and that was a neat step. The side step is as good as you see from a three-quarter, and Thackeray doesn't just do the basic run. That was tinged with a lot of skill. Excellent play there. Boy, that stunned me. It stunned Harlequins. It was a great run from Thackeray. Three times a Great Britain international but not for the uh, the current Great Britain coach, his club coach, Tony Smith, who, of course, will take over full-time control at the end of this season. And he hopes to take full-time control with Great Britain, having left Leeds with the Super League title via the grand final at Old Trafford. Sinfield adds the extras, and Leeds Rhinos are ahead by six points to four. And it's the first drinks break of the afternoon coming up. There you see, it wasn't just a straight run. You'll see how the second rower, Hopkins, will go to his left and watch the step. Bang. Hopkins is off balance. Nothing is going to stop the big fella. That is a great effort. Well, Kevin Sinfield taking on uh, the water. And uh, no wonder today, because it is... And we shouldn't, we shouldn't grumble, because it's the first time we've got that we have actually arrived in the summertime. I saw Phil's uh, wonderful piece a couple of weeks ago, I think it was on Boots and All, about, about fluid loss and, and, uh, and the need for hydration. If you ever wanted an example, take today, because these guys will lose probably somewhere between, I would say, three to five kilograms in, in fluid loss, and um, there's, a, there's a definite need for hydration. This, today is just proof of it. Well, here are the highlights of the, the half we've had so far. Highlights or lowlights as far as Leeds and Brent Webb's concerned. Well, high shots as well, but... I mentioned the fact that good work by the, the Quinns forwards got them into a good position when they did get the ball out wide, but this is superb as well. Oh, he'll be telling, be telling his relatives and friends for quite some time. That was exquisite. He's probably telling them now. How was that, fellas? Well, the drinks break is over. The, the remarkable thing about the drinks break, Phil, is that the players were taking water on board. They were catching it in the mouth and then spitting it out. So that seems to put a huge question mark about the need for it. But anyway, well, I'm no, not a medical there is man. A need for, I think there's a need for education as well. The, the other important thing, it's one try piece. These, of course, are in front. But really, on points, Harlequins is there to be in front because if you look at the skill involved in their, their try, took far more skill from a variety of players than, of course, the fast feet and footwork that we saw from Jamie Thackeray. If anything, going into this game, people's perception was that the Leeds Rhinos are the more skillful of the two sides on show here today, but it hasn't been the case so far in the opening quarter. No, and Leeds have been just a little bit indisciplined, as we say, with the Brent Webb uh, on report twice already. And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Brent Webb once sent to the sin bin twice in a game during his, his uh, Leeds career? Here is Sinfield. Has support. He would take now, was he? No, knock on. Knock on says the referee. They're saying he was held back before he got to the football. Good work by Sinfield. Nice step. No, he got it right. He had the chance to... Kalilulawai to get to it, and there's the man, Brent Webb. 
knocked on. I must say, I'm with you, Eddie. Why, you know, why is it the one official may send him to the sin bin and then he comes up with two within a minute and gets nothing? Amazing. Great run from McClendon. 23rd consecutive appearance for Harlequins. Henry Paul ferries the ball inside. This is John Grayson. Brent Webb, by the way, sin bin twice on the 4th of March at Headingley in the round four match against Huddersfield, which leads 1 16 12. Scott Hill to Rob Purdom. Purdom to Tyron Smith. Webb's there again. Webb's high again. And he's in the back pocket. It's yellow. It's a yellow card for Brent Webb. That's the third high shot from Brent Webb. Twice he's been placed on report. Another high tackle. He shakes his head. You heard the I don't know why. Webb goes to the sin bin. I don't know why. What does he need? A telegram to tell him what he's doing. If he does it again, I'll take further action. First one. No. That's it. Well, he's a lucky fella. I've warned you. That he should be sent off. I'm sorry. Three on the trot. Watch this. No attempt to go anywhere with a ball and all tackle. No attempt to go low into the legs. He shakes his head in total bewilderment. This is Gratian now for Harlequins. Leads down to 12 men. And on a day like this, that could prove absolutely crucial. It is McClendon. Leeds offering him the chance to go wide, and he will go wide. Then he'll draw the man back on the inside, Paul Sykes. It's now with Danny Orr. Gives it infield to Joe Mabu, like Sharif back at Quinns following a traumatic spell at Doncaster. Chad Randall, 10 metres out at dummy half, attacks the line. Henry Paul, great flick pass. Here's Scott Hill from Danny Orr. And Leeds muscling up in defence, and Leeds conceding a penalty for offside. They'll take the tap again, they won't worry about the two points. Brent Webb in the sin bin for the fifth time this year, by the way as Scott Hill waits to take this tap penalty and the referee wants a word with Kevin Sinfield, the Leeds captain. Seven penalties, Kevin. We need to sort the discipline from here now on. 25 minutes, he says, when, when seven penalties. Back. Sort out the discipline from now on, well... He's a man to sort it. Flash that yellow card again. Henry Paul ducked under another swinging arm. This is Randall, now Scott Hill. Scott Hill, wonderful try from the Australian standoff. Well, he's facing Danny Maguire today and providing Danny Maguire with another big test. And Scott Hill has come up with a try that nudges Harlequins back into the lead with Brent Webb, a spectator from the sin bin. But Scott Hill, that took some scoring, that his last strike coming in the 22-all draw against uh, Wakefield in April. If there's one thing you can say about this Harlequin side, there's the incident that saw the fullback Brent Webb get sent to the sin bin. As I say, the one thing you've got to admire about the Quins, you get anywhere near the try line, they've got the power to do it. That was a poor attempt at tackle, he just spun around in the Australian standoff. That was great work. Fully deserved, it's quality all the way through. They've got the magic of the Rhinos at the moment. And remember, Rhinos down to 12 men, as we said. In addition to being down to 12 men, they're also playing without a recognised hooker and a recognised scrum half at present, with Rob Burrow being off the field injured. That faces a significant challenge now to the lead side. Harlequin's beaten here 22-10 by Huddersfield two weeks ago. Prior to that, they'd beaten Catalan Dragons, Hull Kingston Rovers and Wigan in their previous three home games. And this kick from uh, Paul Sykes, in almost cathedral-like hush at the Twickenham Stoop until it goes over the top of the crossbar, edges the Quins ahead by ten points to six. Leeds are in a bit of a battle. And they know it, not just for the fact that we've been down for 12 men, but the... The forwards, they're just not wanting to tackle. They're not wanting to get involved. And you could see there that Clinton Tupi just came out of the line. If you're going to do that, you've got to make sure that you got ball and all, smother it. It allowed Hill just to spin around. Tony Smith will be furious. And he's every right to be because there's some poor defensive efforts out there. That was Joe Mabu's run for Harlequins. That's better from Leeds. Here's Scott Hill. 
fires the pass wide. Well, we've mentioned that uh, Rob Burrow is off the field injured. Here's some news on his condition. Ben Pro. Ben not there at the moment. He will be in a moment. And we'll get the full details, I'm sure. Chad Randall, not the best kick, but it just uh, spirals its way downfield into the arms of uh, Jordan Tanzi. Filling in at fullback while Webb is off the field and in the sin bin. Apart from one uh, lapse, and that was the uh, little side step from Thackeray, they got leads on the board, is uh, that this Harlequin's defence has been pretty solid. They work hard. That's the one thing that the new coach, Brian McDermott, has really instilled into this outfit. Got a hunt as a pack, and they do that. They're over halfway, here's the Leeds try scorer, Thackeray, but he only gets five metres into Harlequin's territory. Four tackles gone, Maguire. Bounces off one, gets it away to Jamie Jones Buchanan. He's still going. Will play the ball to Sinfield. And Sinfield drifts the kick towards the in-goal area, which is very, very narrow indeed here. And the ball just uh, goes dead in goal. Yeah, that's the one thing that the, the Quins are very much aware of. Rugby Union ground, of course, and normally it is a very, very deep in-goal area. Not when it comes down to Rugby League. I Pretty think we've got the power switched on to Ben, so let's go down and get details of Rob Burrow's injury, Ben. It's a rib cartilage problem, Eddie. Rob Burrow uh, in the Leeds dugout with the ice on the injury and a, and a lot of pain grimacing away there, and it really doesn't look good for the Leeds scrum half. No, and he, uh, he picked it up here in the clash with Scott Hill. Chipped downfield by Harlequins. It's uh, picked up by uh, Jordan Tanzik. The biggest problem with the rib cartilage is uh, the fact that it, it will feel that for the entire season. They do not mend very easy. In fact, sometimes it's better for you to break a rib rather than the cartilage to be sprung. Sean, is that possibly a sign of overconfidence from the Harlequins kicking like that on the third tackle? Well, it's a way that Scott Hill plays, isn't it? And Scott Hill tends to take a few risks with his plays, obviously very confident after scoring the try. It's something that, if, as, if I was coaching, I would have encouraged to kick to the corner, turn leads around, ask them some questions coming off their line. Good ball again to Thackeray, but a great defence from Rob Purden. Brian McDermott says that his team have really missed the influence of their skipper. That's a good ball from Senior, but it, uh, too Senior rather, but it wasn't a great ball from Senior wide to Donald. That was round his bootlaces, and Scott Donald simply couldn't pick it up. Well, good play up until this point. Not the best tackle. The winger had come off into the centre, and it should have been an easy touchdown for this fellow. You can't blame him. Beautiful long pass. You see how we just missed out Jones Buchanan. It was great work from Danny Maguire. But Senior knows they bombed it. Leeds destroyed Harlequin 60 points to nil at the start of last year here, their last visit to the Stoop. And there's a great bond between these two clubs. Leeds have frequently allowed players to come here on loan. And Tony Smith in his first Great Britain team last month gave caps to two of these Harlequins players. Here goes John Wells now. And of course it's Tony Smith against Brian McDermott, former coach and assistant at Headingley. This is Rinaldi, the space here for Danny Orr. And Danny Orr attacking the line, flicks the ball to McClendon. It's a strolling for Mark McClendon. And Harlequin's taking control of this match. Outstanding rugby league football. Top quality from start to finish. The ability to run the angle and support. Look at the glum faces on the Rhino fans. In the heat in London, they are being barbecued. Mark McClendon, his 23rd consecutive appearance, and here's his fourth try of the campaign. Beautiful offload, good work there by Wells, back on the inside. But it's their ability to get on and play the ball quickly. You can see how the Leeds defence, they're trying to get themselves sorted out. But look how Senior held back, mainly due to the fact they knew that they had the numbers out wide. A Leeds player was down injured. He held back, back on the inside. It was a superb inside ball. And McClendon says, thank you very much indeed.
The Quinn's in charge. Very much so, and uh, Jordan Tanzi tackled the referee rather than McClendon. To be fair to him, Mr Bentham was right in front of him, couldn't get any out of his way at all. Paul Sykes adds the extras. It's 16 points to six to Harlequins here in the baking sunshine of the capital city. And uh, the sun is shining on that man, Brian McDermott. Well, anybody who was looking through the lineups from both these teams perhaps would have said, wow, there's so many internationals just bursting out of their socks, aren't they? In the Rhinos colours. And there is the man who is not a bit like for a big chase here. being classified as uh, doing anything positive to his side. It isn't Clinton Tupi, of course, it's Brent Webb. He'll be on the field pretty soon, but First hasn't the Quinns just Leeds. completely taken yeah. control? Well, they have the 12 men of Leeds, and in a, such a hot day as this, it's bad enough when you're 13 against 13, never mind 13 against 12. But uh, Leeds must try and get themselves back into this match if they can. They're in danger of uh, well, they've been making it in that. the first half here. They've been making the half breaks, but it, it's in their defence where they have the problem, and also lack of discipline. Yes, they've conceded seven penalties. This is Mabu. I think it just goes to show you, doesn't it, the, how, how it can hurt a team when a player goes to the sin bin. I'm not disagreeing for one moment that Brent Webb shouldn't have gone. What I'm saying is the pressure it puts on your side. We've seen a 12-point turnaround there. We had a game on Friday night as well between Hull KR and ourselves, Salford. We had a man sent to the sin bin, and Hull KR scored 10 points while he was off the field. It can really, really damage you and can upset you for the rest of the game. Webb has come back on, leads up to the full complement then of 13. But he's got a lot to repay his teammates and his coach, Tony Smith. See, he will play the ball. There's Maguire now on the charge. It's a very controlled set, though, Eddie, that from Leeds. Just think they've gone 50 metres there. Simple one-out carries are running from dummy half. The kick to Connor. Not a lot of energy left in the chase at the moment for Leeds. And not a great kick from Sinfield. Straight to uh, John Wells, another former Castleford and Wakefield player, of course, enjoying an impressive season down here. This is Tyrone Smith, tackled by Jamie Peacock. Notice Big Ali Lauatiti is uh, out there as well. That's Ricky Sharif. The one thing about the Quins, they work to their maximum. They may not be as star-studded as the opposition, but look at the scoreline, 16-6. 10-point lead, if they can hang on to that, to the halfway mark. Remember, in this heat, the energy will be sapping away by every single second. Gaffer will hoist the kick here for Harlequins. And Ryan Hall is underneath it. Slips. Tackle is completed just short of his own try line. Here's Brent West. Great tackle again. Flying tackle from Danny Orr. Tanzi skipping away from dummy half, but only making about five, six metres ground. Danny Orr's up for this, you would expect so, given the history. Well, I, know, I know he's enjoyed playing alongside one of the great players of all time, Scott Hill. Half break now from Tupi, gets the ball away to Brent Webb. Webb gives it back. Wonderful tackle by Gaffer. Tupi, though, got it away to Thackeray. Thackeray, infield to Maguire. Maguire trying to jink his way in between two. Did to he knock on the, the tackle? A little bit of a fumble, got away with it. Sinfield's kick is up and over. Back, and uh, he was fortunate then, it was Ricky Sharif. Makes good ground forward though, despite the error, he was facing in the own sticks. Ian Kirk is on. Ooh. Just through the dummy there. Wait. McLinden will play the ball. Here is Danny Orr again. They look a lot more eager, don't they, the Queens? They really are up for this game. This is Rinaldi. Well, they can get into the top six, albeit briefly. All the rest of the teams in the top six hunt will play later on today. There are points here in the next five minutes, Eddie, that's for sure. One side or the other, just seeing the level of fatigue hit both teams at present. Who can push through that pain barrier now and take the chance? High kick and crossfield from Rinaldi. Ball is underneath another. 
and he gets away from the challenge. Not only as far as Scott Hill, though. Good work by Ryan Hall. Obviously, Ryan McDermott, the Queen's coach, feels that he's a little bit of a problem under the high kick, but he's uh, handled it well on the three occasions to put it under pressure. Senior for Leeds. Offloads under pressure to Jamie Jones Buchanan. But the Harlequins defence is coming back and stopping any threat from Leeds at the moment. It's Ian Kirk. Fresh legs on for Leeds. One thing about the Queen's defence as well, they're very compact in and around the play the ball area. So virtually they're forcing Leeds into one out football for most of the time. That's a good kick. It's a very good kick. He was just outside the 40 metre mark actually. But he got it inside the 20-metre mark, the other end. Just a yard the wrong side of the red line. That's Had he been the other side of that red line, it would have been head and feet at the scrum to Leeds, as it is, it's to Harlequins. And uh, needless to say, neither set of forwards in a great rush to pack this scrum down. Well, it is very, very hot out there, and that's the one thing about this long field-kicking position that you need, because it's going to be sweaty out there, the opposition come up, can come up with an error, that is when you can just pounce. Purdom making a long-awaited comeback, as I say. He's missed the last eight. And the Harlequins have missed him badly. Two specialists did say that uh, he would not return this year, but he's defied the medics. It's been an amazing effort, isn't it, from Rob Purdom? A lot of the London fans, they state quite openly that if they had 13 Rob Purdoms out there, they would win the competition. Wouldn't be far wrong either. Rinaldi to Scott Hill. Scott Hill goes inside, but uh, Lautiti and Ellis get to him. And eventually they get him to ground. That's the last tackle. On the 40-metre line, Hill plays it to Rinaldi. And the kick downfield looking for the corner. Oh, it's a good kick too. Takes a great skip. Fantastic from McClendon, that. And that leads the clock up, exactly what they need. And you can see there, and put under no pressure whatsoever, and it is it is important. As I mentioned, just upfield, they'll be looking for exactly the same thing a few minutes before half-time. Now, will the Queens be able to force the error? It is boiling out there. He won't be boiling. I think the other coach, maybe. He'd be delighted, Brian McDermott. Here come Leeds. Can they respond with a try of their own in the two minutes that remain before half-time? Maguire to Senior. Here's Maguire again. Back it goes to Ian Kirk. Good work from Kirk, that. Three tackles gone. Here's Brent Webb again. Jamie Jones Buchanan. Ball goes to ground. The Harlequins have got it back. Leeds not at the races. The referee says it's a knock on, though, by Harlequins. Head and feed to Leeds at the scrum. They're in a dash to form this one. Went back. No, went back, Rob. Oh. Well, that is going backward. That's OK. Now then, does Sharif fumble? Off. Referee's Queens, version is that he did time on. Mm, hard to see Ouch. on that one on the on the angle either way on that occasion you saw that uh, the rhinos got their scrum form very quickly indeed they know I'm, how important it is they've got to get it points Forest. on the board before Here, half please. time they've got to go in there with something positive no. sitting in their minds set ten, that could be obstruction and is yeah well i don't think they're reading off the same script at the moment leads it's when you do the dummy runner, you've got to make sure yeah, that you don't step. And he that's gave exactly. Up Lau Titi, didn't well, Lao Titi just threw the dummy and then stepped and said, oh, I think that might be. Well, they didn't find touch, but I don't think they were looking to find touch. I think they just kicked the penalty and uh, said, we'll have a little race here and see what comes of it. And now Leeds might do exactly the same. Here is Keith Senior. Keith Senior goes to ground. Well, I can't believe whether that was intended from Harlequins, and now they're giving away a silly penalty. They should have been just controlling. They should have been just controlling the game right the way through. I wonder if this was a plan. 
It was no, with the left foot and it was down the line. It wasn't right footed out towards the uh, the people in the stand. Well, I, I think can't. that's a plan. Well, I, uh, it's not a good plan because they're under pressure. They are and they could, they could concede a try. Thackeray. All they had to do was make sure they get it in the need-up time. Maybe go for a one point just to rub it in. Now they're struggling. 13 seconds remaining. Webb. And here is Jordan Tanzi. Will stab the ball towards the in-goal area. Oh, John Wells nearly oh. paid at an enormous price. That'll do it. Won't be time for the game to restart. They got away with that. Harlequins. 38 minutes of near perfection for the Quins. Two minutes of, well, let's say madness, but uh, we won't know until we maybe hear from Brian McDermott whether that was a plan. The kick downfield from the penalty for everyone on the Harlequins side to chase. And as Steve-O said, he put uh, themselves under pressure with that. Brent Webb will not forget this first half in a hurry. He's been in the sin bin twice. He's been in the sin bin. He's on report once. No, he's on report twice. We get it fixed up for half-time. 16-6 to Harlequins. told you that we're at Whitehaven on Thursday night, the live Super League this coming weekend. Friday, Wigan against Huddersfield, 7.30, Sky Sports 2, and available in high definition on HD2. And next Sunday, we're at Bellevue, the home of the Wakefield Trinity Wildcats. We'll see the Harlequins again, 7 o'clock next Sunday, 7 p.m. next Sunday night, Sky Sports 1, HD1, Wakefield against Harlequins. Uh, cloudless, almost, blue sky above the Twickenham stoop and Harlequins ahead, 16 points to six as the players emerge for the start of this second half. Leeds behind on the scoreboard, they've got uh, no recognised hooker out there, Kevin Sinfield, their captain, doing uh, an emergency job, they've got no recognised scrum half either because Rob Burrow went off early in the piece because of rib cartilage damage, so they're up against it, Leeds, and... Uh, Three defeats from the last four Super League games means it'll be tough to repeat the effort of 2004 when they headed at the table after the weekly rounds going into the playoffs. They have won the last five League and Cup meetings against Harlequins, but four of those were played at Headingley, and they've won 22 of 28 in Super League. But on the evidence of the first 40 minutes we've seen here today, uh, Harlequins are going to make that record just look a little bit better. Yeah, it needs a big improvement by the Rhinos, and I'm sure that the coach, Tony Smith, would have uh, given the right attack at half-time. Maybe to the thing, say, listen, come on, let's get this discipline correct. They gave away far too many penalties, and I must say, they allowed the Quins, though that is a very good kick. It's bobbing around in the in-goal area, but they just allowed Harley Quins to boss the game. Simple as that. It was a good kick from Maguire, the man there at the bottom of that tackle, who uh, followed his own kick up, led the chase, and that's why Harley Quins are trapped inside their own quarter of the field at the moment. First minute of the second half has gone. Harlequins in possession once again. Well, we saw a massive difference from Hulkingston Rovers on Friday, Phil, after they came out second half. Justin Morgan said something pretty pertinent to the Robins. I wonder what Tony Smith said to the Rhinos. I think he had to question whether they had the desire to win here today. I think completely outplayed in the uh, first half. A good break there now by Rinaldi. Again, that's the, that's the advantage of having a player recognised and familiar in the dummy half position. Able to spot the chances when to run and know the times when you have to pass the play. This is Brent Webb again. Good following up though by Paul Sykes as he chased that kick downfield. Now Scott Donald for the Rhinos. You know, he's had so little ball today, Scott Donald, because whenever the Quins kicked the ball, they kicked to the left-hand side as they were playing, and, of course, put all the pressure on Ryan Hall on the right wing for Leeds. Scott Donald will be desperate to get involved to show what he can do. Jordan Tanzi again flicks the pass to uh, Ali Lauatiti. What you can see there that Tony Smith has already made a bit of a change is uh, the fullback Brent Webb. That's the second occasion he's gone into the dummy half position. Great That's ball a great ball from Maguire to Ellis. And Brent Webby had to stop, really, to pick that. And that was not the best, frankly, because he had to stop and the ball went behind him. Otherwise, that might have been a try for Leeds. There is now a penalty going Leeds' way for pushing and shoving at the play of the ball. Interference. Brilliant offload, and it already has started to work. Tony Smith 
has told Brent Webb, you've got to get yourself involved there, and Ellis is close. Ellis very close. Couldn't snake the arm out, though. Maguire waits at dummy half. And he'll fire the pass to his captain, Kevin Sinfield. And Sinfield gets it away to Webb. And Webb is buried by two. Thackeray now at dummy half. They're all having a go. Thackeray once more. Got the try in the first half, Thackeray. Held up, though, by players and posts. No chance on that occasion. Brent Webb waiting dummy half this time. Back it comes to Danny Maguire. Maguire drifts the kick in, chases after it himself. Well picked up, though. In defence by Ricky Sharif. Did well there, Senior, just spread the legs. Trying to get the uh, voluntary tackle. Very rare you find an official give that anyway. But Sharif put himself in a good position. Well, that'll lift their spirits. It will, Steve, but Brent Webb should have scored. But the final pass was behind him, he had to stop, and that gave the Harlequins just the vital seconds. It certainly does, and it hasn't been for the first time during this game that uh, some of the, the passing from Leeds has been sloppy. But you made the point that, that they haven't got Barrow out there, and Kevin Sinfield really just having a makeshift as a, as a hooker. They need someone with the impact, and obviously Brent Webb's going to be the man. Well, an offload from Sykes to Gareth Ellis. Play the ball to Donald, here is Sinfield, here is Jamie Jones Buchanan. Gets away from Grayson. Grayson though comes back, second attempt and pulls him down. Scott Donald again, it's Kevin Sinfield. Now, Ian Kirk. Three tackles gone. Halfway through this latest set of six. Scott Donald, the dummy half. Sinfield standing first receiver, gives it wide then to Jordan Tanzi. Tanzi, looking for Tupi. And Tupi couldn't get the ball under control. Harlequins have it back, breathing a sigh of relief for the Quins, and I'm sure their injured fullback Chris Melling is with Ben. Chris, 10 point lead for Harlequins at half time. A good first half performance, but Leeds will come back strong in this second half. Oh, definitely. I mean, you know, Leeds are you know, in the top four, and they've shown all year that they're consistent, say they've got good performances, and they've got a, a strong team. You know, to come back in the second half, we've got to be on top of our game and, and do the simple things right, keep hold of the ball, you know, good kick with a chase uh, and put them under some more pressure and it's all about a victory that would uh, improve your playoff position definitely I mean you know we've, we've had some good results this year and unfortunately we've, we've lacked with some consistency uh, and that's meant that you know the last couple of weeks with other teams getting victories we, we're not in a stronger position as what we were you know five or six weeks ago maybe so it's yeah definitely I mean the, the win today would do our, our league table our league position a lot better Two tackles gone, this latest set of six for Leeds with Maguire and now Senior. And Senior couldn't get away from this uh, very good Harlequins defence. It's with Jamie Jones Buchanan. Much higher, temp much higher tempo from the Rhinos in the second half. It had to be, of course. This is Jordan Tanzi. Thackeray. Thackeray scored from that range in the first half. He's looked, actually, their most potent attacking threat, remarkably, Jamie Thackeray. Here is Maguire, long pass out, brilliantly flicked up and back, and Senior offside. was offside, says the referee, so no try. He'll just have the restart. Not a bad option there from Maguire, but uh, a little bit far too high. Good work by the winger. Stood his ground. We're saying offside. The touch judge immediately put the flag up to say that he'd uh, actually touched the whitewash Scott Donald before that ball was flung back inside. And he's right. No, no, he isn't. You know what, Eddie? You asked what Tony Smith would have said to his team at half time. I think it's run hard when we've got the ball and tackle even harder when we don't. And I think you've seen that here now in the first six minutes. Even from the kickoff of this game, the first set of the second half. Ian Kirk ran with the determination that we didn't see enough from Leeds in the first half, and it's completely Quiz. turned around the game. We it's saw all the power score. and dominance from Harlequins in the first 40, and Come the on. second half started in Leeds' favour. Okay. Yes, they've uh, forced a knock on by Harlequins, 10 metres away from their own line. This is a chance for the Rhinos with Maguire. He showed it to a couple, he flicks it wide to Scott Donald. Great defence again. Fantastic defence from Paul Sykes. Ball and all tackle, try saver, that's for sure. Maguire to Thackeray. Thackeray still offloads to Brent Webb. Brent Webb! He gets it down. Does he? Yeah. Yes, says Mr. Bentham, the referee. Brent Webb, what a mixed afternoon he's having. Two 
Incidents placed on report. One spell in the sin bin. Got it right that time. Now a four-pointer. And fully deserved as well because he has been the difference. And full credit to their coach, Tony Smith, because he has thrown in the mantle and said, hey, you go out there and repay your team. And it was good play indeed. Thackeray, as you've mentioned, Eddie, he really has been an impact player since he came on. And Brent Webb has been the difference. Getting himself into the dummy half position, but in a good support play there. Back on the inside. Not the best there by Gratian. And that has given the Leeds fans something to shout about because they've been extremely quiet for some considerable time. 18 times in New Zealand International. The top try scorer for the Leeds Rhinos in Super League. That's number 17 of 2007. That's Kevin Sinfield's second goal of the afternoon. That's 86 for the season for him. And uh, Leeds are back in the hunt of a match that really did at half-time, Sean McRae, look as though it was running away from them dreadfully. Yeah, well, it did, Eddie, and I made the point as well, didn't I, at half-time, that I watched both sides walk off and they couldn't wait to get in the change room. They were both absolutely exhausted. you just got a feeling whoever came out and started the second half well would be able to score points because it's very difficult to defend your try line for set after set. Leeds have probably been a little bit guilty of, of their execution with their passes. I think they've had opportunities to score a couple of tries so far and haven't really taken those opportunities. But you just got a feeling, as long as they're inside the 20, 10 metre zone up there on Harlequin's try line, that, that somewhere, somewhere soon they had to crack and it's happened. The question is now, can they kick on and win this match? Harlequins, well, for 45 minutes, they've been in almost total control. But uh, it's a funny old game, it can turn on its head. In the blink of an eye, this is Jamie Jones Buchanan. Louis Good. McCarthy Scarsbrook brings him down with help from Purdom. A lot more heavy work as well from the Leeds forwards, which was uh, missing in that first stanza. That's a great kick. It is a great kick. If this goes over the line, it's a 40 20. 40 20 it is from Danny Maguire. Well, he's got 21 tries in meetings against London and Harlequins over the years. He scored in the last eight matches against them. This is almost as good as a four pointer. What a kick. I must say that uh, it caught John Wells out there. Well, that's not a 40 20, that's a 31. <laughs> yeah. He's kicked that from about the 30 metre yeah. line, and it's got a metre from the trial. That is magnificent. And you know, John Wells read it. John Wells ran back and he read it. He read the kick. Mark McGlindon read it. They just weren't good enough. It was perfectly executed. Magnificent kick from Maguire. You're not predicting a the try out of here, are you? No, I'm saying it's as good as a four pointer. Great movement, and he bounces off Sykes Maguire, gives it to Scott Donald. But uh, again, Harlequin's just standing, waiting, harassing, allowing Leeds to move inside, run laterally. When they try and run straight, clunk. Here is Ellis. Gets the ball away again to Ian Kirk, but this harassing Harlequin's defence stands firm again. Good scrambling from the home side. Now, Sinfield. Ellis, good hit by Hopkins, low down as he took that pass. They're inching towards the line again, though, Leeds with Webb. Now it's with Maguire. Maguire gives it to Tupi. Tupi tries to stand Paul Sykes up. With Sharif, he's brought to ground. Scott Donald, Maguire. And Maguire, great defence from Sharif, but Maguire smuggles the ball back to Keith Senior. And Good senior work. trying to use his strength to hand the players off, but can't do so. Good word though by uh, Keith Senior. Could see that his, uh, his player was in a lot of trouble. Back on the inside, nice little chip through. Oh, wonderful from Jordan Tanzi. Absolutely marvellous from Tanzi. That perhaps an element of luck about it. I don't know. We might see it on the replay. But he was thinking all the time. Then just grubbed the ball behind the defence, and when it bounced up, it stuck perfectly for him. And Jordan Tanzi, the man who scored that try at the Millennium Stadium against the Bradford Bulls in the last minute, has come up with one here at the Harlequins Twickenham Stoop Ground. But it's all down to that 40-20. Tremendous kick, wasn't it? If there's anything in life, especially in rugby league, that lifts your spirits, it's something like that. As you can see, uh, the Quins had to trot back into a position. Oh, that was excellent work. He knew exactly what was happening. It wasn't as though it was a missed kick or anything. Okay, he got the bounce. 
but that was sheer quality. And they're back in this game. Very much well so. and truly. Well, they've not been in front yet, but this kick from well, they were two points briefly in the first half after Thackeray's try, and so they take the lead again for the second time, and it's still only a two-point margin. But at least as far as the Rhinos are concerned, they are in the lead. I remember we were down here once, Bradford, was it? Quinns in total control, first half. Bradford absolutely ran away with it, second half. Do you remember? Or have I got it wrong? I think I'm right. Well, you normally are. No. It either was, way, either way. It was 26-0 at half-time. Yep. Ian Proctor's always right. It was 26-41 at full-time. Bradford just ran away with the game in the second half. Well, the beauty about this uh, Leeds fight back is coming about because they've had possession, they've had field position, and when you add that to the fact that they've given no penalties away in the second half, they've controlled it. And this guy, played out of his skin, isn't he? Well, he is. As I say, it's been a very mixed afternoon for him, and he gets another penalty. Steve A, you make a very valid point there. It's, it's 13 minutes gone in the second half, and I can remember Harlequins probably having the ball for two sets. That's been the, that's been their problem. Back of penalty, back back to back penalties, everything. Just one thing on Jordan Tansy, I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, that's no flum that, that's no fluke that kick. I'll be, players like Jordan Tansy practice that all the time, and it's come off for him today. Sinfield will scamper away from dummy half. Big Ali Lawatiti is there. I understand from Ben on the sideline, by the way, that Tony Smith made the point at half time that Harlequins had made seven interchanges in the first half. And he thought, Tony Smith did, that the Quins might just run out of puff as this game progressed. Well, here's another penalty against Harlequins. He's made an impact as well, you know, the big fella, Ali Lawatiti, and uh, not surprisingly, they've gone for. First. The power play. Sinfield again, looking for the penalty off Purdom. Sinfield from dummy half, and Sinfield's over. That's a heck of an effort from the skipper. Kevin Sinfield gets the try on the back of the penalty. You can hear what the Harlequins faithful think about the penalty from Phil Bentham. But they have had, uh, well, quite a few penalties at the uh, opening quarter hour or so of this. Second half, the Leeds Rhinos, and they seem to have made each and every one of them pay. Sinfield with the try from dummy half. That's his fourth try of the season. In this, his seventh appearance at hooker. The ten-try veteran of Super League, Kevin Sinfield. Well, it all came about by this controversial penalty here. The official said that it was ripped out by Danny Orr and Lauatiti just left the ball on the ground, they've got it, got position there, it was good work from Sinfield, they were slow to get themselves sorted out, Rob Purdom, there you can see him, he just got pushed out of the way, lack of game time obviously paid the price there for Purdom, and this fella took full advantage. And adds the extras as well, Kevin Sinfield, 24 points to 16 now, a match that was slipping away from them, 16-6 at half-time. They have scored three tries in seven minutes, courtesy of Webb, Tanzi and Sinfield. This will be a little bit clearer from this angle. Was the half-back pulling the ball away, Danny Or It's hard to see there. Either way, Phil Benton is the man with the whistle. The question is for Harlequins, Eddie, how do they get their hands on the ball? Do they elect a short kickoff and take the gamble of losing possession Outside. around the halfway line? Or do they punt it deep again and try and hope that they don't concede a penalty? They've gone for the long option at the moment, though. They just cannot get their hands on the ball, and when they do, it's near their own try line. Very hard, isn't it, Sean, to stop momentum when your opponents have it? Absolutely right, Phil. It's very hard to play without the ball, something that we learned on, on Friday night against Old KR. For the first 20 minutes, we didn't get over halfway. We had only a couple of sets with the ball. It's very hard to play out of your own half, and that's what Harlequins are doing in this in this second half so far. For the first 16 minutes, it's all been leads with the ball. It's been all the penalties, it's been territory possession. They've had everything going their way so far. But, uh, you know, the scoreline indicates that Harlequins can hang in there. You look on the screen, you see Lewitt leads 82% possession. 
Yes, well, now Harlequins have got the ball back. Uh, Danny Maguire couldn't take the pass in. He'll be furious at coach Tony Smith, mainly the fact that they've taken into a commanding lead. What they really needed was what we saw earlier. A kick downfield, something akin to uh, the Danny Maguire 40-20. He will be furious. They were taking control, now they've given the Quinns a chance. But uh, ominously for Harlequins, they are starting to plod a bit. Leeds have the spring in their step. Obviously, conceding three tries hasn't helped the Harlequins. Well, they've had to do all defensive work, haven't they? Yes. And look at that, they've only got two changes remaining for 22 and a half minutes, Harlequins. And Leeds with a bag full of uh, interchange players available. Surrender! Leaves him very few options for Brian McDermott. They're going to have to stick it out because the final quarter is going to be difficult. Really is energy sapping out there. Last tackle here, and Danny Orr. That was played up by the Leeds man, but it's uh, all right. It's arrived at Maguire, and he skipped away from two challenges. Can't get away from Sykes, though. Sean, would you be a little bit concerned if you were Brian McDermott, having had to use so many in, uh, your substitutes in this in this heat? Uh, absolutely. I think seven is, is too many. I don't know whether he had people suffering from heat exhaustion or anything like that, uh, Eddie, but uh, to take to use seven before half-time is a huge number. Most coaches tend to work on four or five. They don't even like to get to halfway with their interchanges because you tend to feel in the second half there's a greater fatigue that comes on. You'd like to have a few up your sleeve. There is a, another drinks break due in about a minute and a half. He's gone for another 40-20 there. Well, he tried, did Danny Maguire, because of the great run on the ball, but didn't quite get the angle right on that occasion. You see, Eddie, I have no problem with that kick. He's kicked it from inside the 40. He's actually made 40 metres on the, on the kick because Leeds can now walk up, they can be set. It's taken Harlequins a while to get back. So they've made, they've made plenty of metres on that kick. That's not a bad tactic. And it's a tactic that has been used by uh, the London side for many, many years. I remember when Tony Ray was in, uh, in charge, that's a swinging arm. Silly play from Jones Buchanan. Getting back to that tactic from Tony Ray, they used to deliberately do exactly that, Sean. And it can be a good ploy, but this is not a good one. A lazy swinging left forearm. Jamie Jones Buchanan with the, uh, the bad technique and the tackle on Ricky Sharif. Well, we've just praised the the Rhino side for their discipline in the second half. It was all astray in the first 40. And we know that the Quins are quite capable of scoring tries when they get very near. Oh, he's saying he's involved in the tackle, and I think the he officials got it, right. got it right. Yes, they did. It was an attempt by Gareth Ellis to, uh, to tackle the man with the football. The ball shot out probably off his arm, but he did not play the ball. The ball played him. That's the way the officials have judged it. That's why Leeds have this possession. Here's Jamie Peacock. Spring in the step, isn't it? There is. Complete difference from that first stanza. Ball on the inside to Senior. The tackle needed, and it was from Carl Tamata. Maguire, Jordan Tanzi, stepping back on the inside, finds Maguire. Maguire toying with Danny all there, and Maguire from a standing start! Couldn't get the ball down, though. Great tackle from McClendon. Tansy waits the dummy half. There's the big man, and good defence. It was Kevin Sinfield hunting a second try. Last tackle here for Leeds. Brent Webb off the post. Oh, bouncing everywhere. Where's that gone? It came off a leg. It's a goal line dropout. We're at the hour mark. Will it be drinks? Will the drinks cabinet come out or not? Well, I think the, the Quins will need it because they want something to stop this Leeds momentum. They have taken total control. And I'll repeat it, what I said earlier, is the fact that very, in the first or second minute of this restart, you could see that Tony Smith had said to Brent Webb, get involved, get in there. First receiver runs from dummy half. That's what he's done. Phil has just made a very good point, actually. Leeds have scored three tries in this second half. There's been quite a few breaks in play. They might not actually impose the, the, uh, the water break at uh, the midway point of the half. Looks like they're not at the moment anyway. This is Lulawai. I wonder if that trend will be followed in the north uh, today in the three matches that remain. Because it's warm up there as well. Summer's arrived, fellas. I never doubted it. <laughs> I kept telling you about the change in the moon. Maguire. Go, oh, it's easy. Ellis. Under the sticks. Gareth Ellis. 
and I'm afraid Harlequins are falling in a heap. But the big decision in this game, possibly the turning point, was the decision by the referee to award a goal line drop out there. Danny Orr was adamant that the Leeds players were the ones who'd forced over the dead ball line, and the goal line drop out really signalled the end for Harlequins today. Gareth Ellis with the try, has had an outstanding season, an early season candidate for Man of Steel. He's fallen out of the reckoning lately, but perhaps he's just uh, poked his nose back into it. Son of the York and Doncaster uh, ex-prop Ken Ellis, and he's ever present in Super League this year. Now well, this is a controversial moment. There's the incident. It's off the posts. It's hard to see who it's come off. To be fair, it really is difficult from that angle. We'll see it better, but the inside pass here was quite superb. See how they drifted across the Harlequins' defence. And as Eddie has mentioned, a little bit of fatigue is setting in. It's a planned move. Ellis knew exactly what was going to happen from Sinfield, and the combination has put the Rhinos well and truly in control. Gareth Ellis with the try. The referee has called time off for the water break. Wisely, I think, because it really is uh, tropical heat they're playing in today. And uh, Kevin Sinfield, bang in front, just a few moments ago has kicked the goal. Let's have another look at this incident. Who did force the ball out? No doubt in the referee's mind it was Harlequins, and he's right. Yeah. It's off the Harlequins' foot. I think that's Danny Webb, Orr's foot. Webb gets a, a foot to it first, and then Danny Orr gets the second one. There and it is. And Danny Orr made a play for it. Yeah. The, the foot was raised. I'm not sure he went for a play for it, but maybe he was well, just swinging through. Either way, the official has got it right. Controversy over with. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Not like you. Not when there's a break in play and you can have a swish or whoever you like. Have a go. Here's the story of the match so far, the first half anyway. <laughs> or the second half. The first half of the second half, how's that? <laughs> it's been all leads, that was a heck of a oh, kick. This was a, this was the turning point as far as I was concerned. We mentioned the fact, Sean McRae, about how you can lift a side. And you, you said he was 31, 31, not a 40, a 20, a 31. 31-1, thir I think I said, 31, or 30 to one. 1. He's kicked it from 31 metres out and it's landed a metre inside. It was a brilliant kick and it was a turning point because that's, you need something special from your big game players and Danny Maguire's just capable of coming up with that sort of play. And Harlequins, again, I, I've got to make the point, they just haven't been in this half. They've, they've, they've played 23 minutes now inside their own half and you just can't play from there. Yeah, they've only had two opportunities to apply the pressure to the lead Rhino line. The crowd saying that Jamie Jones Buchanan then uh, dummied to take the play the ball. I think he did. Not in the spirit of the game, trying to catch them offside at the play the ball, but the referee, Mr Bentham, had other ideas. Another tempted 40-20 out on the fall. Jordan Tanzi. Well, we've been looking for turning points throughout the course of this match. Is that one? Well, it certainly helped, won't it? As I say, this will be the only third occasion that uh, the Quins, the only one left. One change left for 16 minutes. As I say, it must be upper 80s out there. Sometimes you take the gamble, and obviously Brian McDermott, we don't really know whether he has been forced into doing that in that first half. Tyrone Smith. Gets the ball away, it's McClendon. Well, oh, that should have been a flop. Peacock rolled over the top. I don't, I don't think he was tackled, Steve. I think he'd escaped, I think he'd escaped the, uh, the net. Ten metres away, Harlequins with Henry Paul. The Leeds defence wasn't going to be fooled by that. That's three of the six tackles gone this set of six. Chad Randall gives it with and finds Danny Orr behind Purden. And Ricky Sharif has knocked on, and Scott Donald's picked it up, and it's a foot race with Scott Donald, and you can put, as they say in Australia, the glasses down, because Scott Donald is going over next to the posts, and Leeds Rhinos get another try, and this game has turned on its head in the 25 minutes of the second half that we've had so far. That's the fifth Leeds try, and Harlequins with a mistake close to the Leeds Rhinos line, and Scott Donald makes them pay for it on his 57th consecutive appearance, and he's hit double figures now for the season. That's Scott Donald's 10th touchdown. Well, in the first half, 
All the bad passes were coming from Leeds. They were really all at sea, but I'm afraid it's turned around. And when the winger could not pick it up on the half volley, it was a shocking pass out wide. It's a cinch for Donald. And that will seal it. They had to score there at the London outfit. And they failed to do that. That's what they get paid for. He's got the speed. And Donald says thank you very much indeed. Not the best effort from Ricky Sherry, but let's not pour all the blame on his shoulders because it was a disgraceful pass in the first place. If this goal goes over and you wouldn't get uh, too many odds that it won't, and it doesn't, it is 30 points in 25 minutes of this second half for the Leeds Rhinos. You mentioned that fact earlier, didn't you? It was against Bradford. Yes, they fell in a heap that day. And they have done it yet again. They'll be left wondering, and I think he realises that they had to get possession, maybe to apply that pressure, maybe force the Rhinos into having the same effect as they did in that first half, where they were being pushed into making errors, their lack of discipline was very poor indeed, Sean McRae, but I'm afraid it has just turned around. It has been good performance by the Rhinos, hasn't it? Absolutely. Um, if, if I was critical of one thing from Leeds in the, in the first half and the early stage of the second half was that their passing execution wasn't, wasn't quite what they would expect. That's obviously improved dramatically, but there's a, here's a short kickoff from Henry Paul just to try something different, to try and get the ball back. They're not able to do it. But the point I was going to make was that Harlequins there, if they were guilty of anything, it was their execution of the pass because they definitely had numbers. They went the right side, they'd created some space, someone was about to hit the hole, but the pass just was, wasn't was accurate enough and, and they paid the ultimate price for that. I think Brian McDermott, if he can take any consolation from the match, though, thus far, is the, the way that his team played in the opening 40 minutes against another team that might have been out of sight. Yeah, I'd agree Perhaps with that, Eddie. I'd agree with that. And look, and, and as I said, I, you know, far be it for me to be... Well, I don't know why he's used seven changes, but I do believe that has been a, that's been a major factor in the second half. The fact that he used seven in the first half. Brent Webb with the chip down the line, and uh, there was a couple of players hitting the deck in back play there. First went down Jordan Tanzi, I think then okay. Paul Sykes was another. The referee's going to take a report from his touch judge here. Just have a look where it bounced, Dash, if you can. Well, there was certainly contact with Webb, but whether it was uh, legal or right, illegal... So report, Paul. Okay. Sykes back foot, tripping. OK, it's a deliberate trip. So Tanzi over the top. Now, yeah, now then. He was tripped, I think. You just saw him hit the deck there in back yep. play, Jordan Tanzi. Thanks. Here. Penalty. Oh, yes, he lashed out, did uh, Paul, Paul Sykes. Sykes. And I think he knew he was there. That was silly play. Go. Leeds looking to turn the screw. This is Lulawai, bounces off one, but can't get away from the next. Go. It's Jamie Jones Buchanan, Danny Maguire, and Webb, and the short ball, and they are in again. It is Jamie Peacock. Well, he's smiling now. He was grimacing at half time and throughout the first half, Tony Smith. Whatever he has said, Whatever magic he has used in that dressing room has worked. And uh, Leeds, well, they keep the pressure up on St. Helens at the top of the table. They needed this win to close the gap back to two points after Saints' victory over Hull on Friday. And I think Peacock's try ensures that they are going to get that. All came about by the trip here from Paul Sykes. Got the penalty, put them in a position. And quite frankly, this is top quality. This is superb passing. Now watch how he just hesitates with the pass. Draw the man. That is outstanding. He has made a huge difference, hasn't he? Brent Webb. He was the villain of the piece in the first half. Ten minutes in the sin bin. Reported twice. But he has been the man to turn it around. And it was his final pass that left... The big fella Peacock with a try that surely now would seal this game. Only a second try of the season. Sinfield adds two more points. Peacock, almost 300 appearances in his career. This is his 50th for the Leeds Rhinos. International forward of the year in 2006 as Great Britain captain. And surely the incumbent skipper when uh, Tony Smith announces his squad and captaincy for the 
New Zealand incoming tour in the autumn. It's amazing how it has just turned around, but the, the, the Harlequin side just have had no possession. They have had no ball at all and no field position either. Well, it's a trait that seems common with the Quins over the last month. If you look at their last two Super League games, eight all against Hull two games previous this, went on to lose. Six all at half-time with Huddersfield in the last second Super League game and lost by 22 points to 10. So I think second-half performances in the half-time address and how they cope and refuel themselves at half-time will be something that the Quins look at. Leads with the... Uh, the luxury of being able to make changes as this game wears on into the last 10 minutes and uh, Harlequins well they're down to uh, down to 11 11 changes I think they have one remaining just shows you how that you can control a game it was the Harlequins doing that in that first 40 Leeds have done it and it's been some spectacular rugby league football from both sides trouble is it was on one side in from the London outfit in that first half but it has been a tremendous effort and that's and play on. another wonderful effort from Maguire he pinched the ball off McClendon then the tackle was not completed says the referee and here goes Sacri looking for his second try losing the ball Chad Randall has it back and play on shouts referee Phil Bentham well Tony Smith the Leeds coach he will be over the moon the way that they have really really Turn it all around in this second standard, but the most important I think deep down will be the way that Jamie Thackeray has played first, Even in the first half he was the, the man Perhaps who was showing more effort more individual skills. In fact, it was him that scored their first try And he, he seems to have lost weight doesn't he? And he seems to be a lot faster Penalty to Harlequins now stealing the ball two men in the tackle Kevin Sinfield seems bemused, he and Maguire, and Maguire is also telling his captain it's not him. Time off. Mm. Maybe a little hard done by the Rhinos there, but uh, 42 Time points off. to 16. If it was 16-22, they might be complaining a little more vigorously. No, they feel that uh, in the final eight minutes, all they'll want to do, and the message will get out from there. Oh, that's a, another error, is it not on play no, on? they got away with it. What will Leeds will be wanting to do is make sure that the, the Quins don't get any more points on the board. It's a new ball game when it comes down to this. They know they've got the vital two points. Now they've got to make sure that they do not concede a try. Scott Hill goes down. Back on Thursday with you for the Boots North special. We're up in Cumbria, Whitehaven against Castleford. We go from south to north in the blink of an eye on the Sky Sports with the rugby league coverage. And it's National League. Whitehaven, Castleford on Thursday. Steve will pack his sun oil, I think you might need it. Oh, you're not coming! Keeping you away from Cumbria, the people there will be delighted to know. And Danny Orr comes up with a try. It'll be given. Wins, it will be given. Well, it gets the applause from the faithful Danny Orr. It's his third touchdown of 2007. Almost 100 tries. Over a thousand points since his 1997 debut. Uh, Castleford lad, as I said earlier, he loves to upset the Leeds Rhinos. This will upset them, but only because they've conceded late on. It was a good move as well. Switch from the the hooker Chad Randall Never said back die. onto the blind side. Little chip through. Certainly played for by uh, Jones Buchanan, I think it was. Sorry, uh, Bailey. And Bailey just patted it down or takes it. They know that they can score. Trouble is that we keep harping on about it in the second half. If you're a Harlequins fan, you'll be wanting me to just keep the lips shut, but they just haven't had the opportunities. None whatsoever. And it looks like another Super League win here for Leeds, but I think their biggest issue between now and the end of the season, before they get to the playoffs, is finding a player or players who's happy, comfortable and dangerous in the hooking role, or primarily at the dummy half position. That's probably the most important position nowadays, Sean, in rugby league, and Leeds need to find a player or players who can do that when they get to the playoffs. Yeah, I agree with that, Phil. I'm just, I'm hearing that Matt Diskin may be available, though, uh, next weekend. I'm hearing that he's not far away from, from coming back, so it could well be next Friday against uh, Salford City Reds that Matt Diskin makes his return. So uh, 
I'd be delighted if he didn't. He should have another week off. Sean, are you uh, impressed with the way that Tony Smith has uh, injected Brent Webb into the action? He had to do something with Burrow off the field, didn't he? Yeah, look, he's, Brent Webb's a smart player in, in that he can play up in the line. He's a fullback that can play in the line. So Excuse he, me, he Sean, does... this is a, an error here from Jordan Tanzi from the kickoff, out on the fall. Last thing Lee wanted, really. Yes, uh, it, it won't make a lot of difference to the result, of course, but it may give Quinns an opportunity to score more points, which is something that Leeds won't want. Uh, yeah, going back to Brent Webb, he's, he's a very smart player who can play from the fullback role, but he can come up and link as a as a pivot type player. The other player I'd give credit to when Rob Burrow went off the field is Danny Maguire. I think Danny Maguire has handled that that sort of first um, role as, as as pivot there, and Jordan Tanzi has also filled in, in very very well, which I understand is probably a, a position that he likes to play as a standoff. Here is Scott Hill, and now it's Danny Orr who finds Purdom again. Thackeray held on to him. Bailey will move in and finish off. I've got some good news for you, Sean, by the way, looking ahead to next Friday. Last time Salford won at Headingley. Danny Orr dribbling it through, picked up by Keith Senior. 1977, Sean. A senior gives it to Maguire. He has scored in each of the last eight against the Harlequins. He's going to score here today and maintain that record. Danny Maguire ensures it's not Harlequins for the time being who get the last lap, but it's the Leeds Rhinos. Maguire with his 12th try of the season and his ninth in successive matches against this team, the Harlequins RL. We made the point just before kickoff is the fact that uh, when you looked at this Leeds outfit on paper, they had the speed and they have shown that in the second half especially. Kick through, didn't come off well and Senior kept his nerve. He knew he had someone younger, more agile and certainly faster. And look how Senior just shielded him away to make sure that no one got anywhere near him. Here, you'd have it. You take it. That is great, isn't it? See a young player had his mind and eyes on the corner and I'm afraid it has been a total collapse for Brian McDermott's men. And not surprisingly, Maguire gets the reward of a little rest for the final minutes. Change of kicker here, it's Jordan Tanzi. Kevin Sinfield would have been kicking for 20 points in the match. But it's uh, Tanzi with the most difficult chance of the afternoon. He's kicked it. Wow. 48 points to 20. Well, uh, I can't, I can't believe, sorry. Sean. Sorry, Eddie, do you mind if I uh, get that date off you? Yes. Did you say 1977 yes. or 97? 1977. Oh, I thought you said that. I was just trying to remember what I was doing then in 1977. <laughs> I think I left, I think I left school that year. Is that I, right? I think that was the year I left well, school. Well, that's the last time Salford won at Headingley, Sean, so mm -hmm. you're going to make history on Friday. Well, yeah? records, you know, you know what they say about records? They're, they're there to be broken. They're there to be broken, so. You would, you would at school in that? In 77? Absolutely, uh, Steve. Absolutely. Oh. I took a long time you, you to went, graduate. You, where <laughs> well, were you in 1977? <laughs> oh, don't ask. <laughs> Tony Ray live tonight, 9.30, Sky Sports News. Uh, he'll round up all the highlights of this weekend. There are still three matches to come this afternoon. Well, he won't look forward to having to discuss this particular game. The first half, yes. Second half, it's been a blitz. But full and credit to the, like they're not finished yet. But full credit to this Rhinos outfit, you know, it, it has to be given credit with the way that they just changed things around, the forwards worked hard. They've done all that's been required from their coach, Tony Smith. It has been a tremendous effort second half. Last two minutes, they're looking for more. They might get more here. This is senior. Brent Webb's on his shoulder. Brent Webb! They're going to hit 50. Second try for Brent Webb. Well, some people might say Brent Webb should not be on the field after his indiscretions in the first half. Twice placed on report, once in the sin bin for three high tackles. The disciplinary committee will see if he has a case to answer for those two incidents on report later in the week. But uh, he has certainly made an impact in this match one way or another. A very tired outfit, but take nothing away from the ability for Jamie Peacock to hit the man and send the man through the gap. And again, 
Keith Senior on hand. He's had a tremendous impact as Senior. But what about the offload? Ah, that's superb, isn't it? As Sean McRae said, Tanz is certainly played exceptionally well. And this man, as Eddie has already mentioned, should he have been out there? I would say no, he shouldn't have been. I'm not the official. Phil Bentham is a man with a whistle. Jordan Tanzi just kicked his first ever goal for Leeds off the touchline. This, well, a little easier. Yep. And he kicks his second successful goal for the Leeds Rhinos. 54 points to 20. The scoreline looks very lopsided. It has been a lopsided second half, but it was certainly anything but lopsided in the first half. Quinns were ahead, 16-6. But the Harlequins team have absolutely dropped in a hole. And it'll be interesting to find out the reasons behind Brian McDermott's high number of interchanges in the first half, Phil. I don't think it's the only reason. I think we saw a completely different mentality from the Leeds Rhinos after half-time. They really ran the ball far stronger than they had. And they were much more aggressive in defence, Eddie. And I think that the turnaround, coupled with the penalties that they received and the possession on the back of that, ultimately led to what we saw. Well, the Leeds fans were sitting on their hands at half-time. Uh, they were a bit disgruntled, I think the coach was as well. But what a performance in the second half, from 16-6 down to 54-20 at the final hooter. Eight second-half tries scored by the following people, Webb, Tansy, Sinfield, Ellis, Donald, Peacock, Maguire, and Webb again.